gliding towards a crash. Reflections on this moment. I'm about to read to you my A Calm Presence posting called Gliding. Towards a crash. Friends and colleagues often ask me why I focus my energies on anticipating, observing, and experiencing social disruption and collapse. This is language from the Deep Adaptation Forum. And it's a good question. Instead of societal collapse, Arno Kopecki author of The Environmentalist Dilemma, Promise and Peril in an Age of Climate Crisis, and also an upcoming guest in Conscient Podcast, episode 206. Arno suggested to me in a September 14th, 2024 email that I consider focusing on a thriving society lens so that we're running towards something beautiful rather than fleeing something terrible. A good point, Arno. Arno also mentions that it's ultimately the same thing. And I think he means that societal collapse and societal revitalization follow essentially the same path. But I would agree that running towards something positive is more interesting and useful than the negative. Duly noted, as they say on the Canada Land podcast. However, I have to admit that I quite often fall into collapse rabbit holes and sometimes can't see the light. So I call upon my friends in previous episodes. This time, episode 165, Bill Crandall. Art can change us. Being an artist or making art in the context of climate, it's more, but I think it's more generally about being a kind of light in the darkness uh, and making, making us believe in ourselves and believe in the future so that we want to endeavor to save the thing that we have, you know, our, our habitat. Some people like to say art can't change the world, but it can change us. And then we can change the world more effectively. So, Here's my answer to the focus question. It's a story about a story that I recorded in episode 202, Koman Poon. What are you doing with your life? When I first met uh, Vanessa in 2019, I think she shared this story with me about, you know, the metaphor of the plane crash as a, a way of talking about the um, the time of the great turning, so to speak, for lack of a better term. And this idea is that there is no, um, there is no um, prevention of the crash, right? 
if you and I and you know every living thing that is on so called the plane is on Pachamama Mother Earth with us uh, we're going through a crash we're going through you know six extinction we're going through climate collapse geopolitical collapse economic collapse all types of overlapping interlaced cycles of destruction and like on planes what you can do at best is to get ready for a glide as opposed to a hard landing because that means some will survive and those that survive aren't necessarily the lucky ones. So while we're on the plane, you know, instead of putting on our noise-canceling earphones, pretending that we're not in a sardine can, we could try turning to each other, saying hello. So many things can happen between the moment when we know the plane is going to crash, that there's no getting away from that, and the crash itself. So my invitation is to the listeners, what are you doing? What are you doing before the crash in this time? What are you doing with your life? How are you going to actually weave connection? Because it's still possible to operate um, without hope. It's absolutely imperative. Now, saying hello is what I try to do with every A Calm Presence posting and also the Conscient Podcast, Balado Conscient, saying hello in Coleman's way. And I don't feel doomist or defeatist or nihilistic in saying that. I don't feel like I'm being overly negative or proselytizing or virtue signaling or being self-righteous. Though I have done that in the past and probably will again. I did an episode about that. Episode 111, Traps. What are the traps in your life? Well, I see a trap called proselytizing, which happens when People try to teach and convince others that a particular issue of interest should be the most important thing for everyone. Oh, wait a second. I, I do that all the time as a climate activist and with my art and ecology podcast. Of course you do. And, and well, you should, you know, no worries. But the danger is that your work could be perceived as an effort to assert moral high ground. And while this trap may be driven by a genuine passion for an issue, and you certainly are passionate about your work, it has the potential to impose onto others in a way that does not respect their own unlearning journey. And often actually has the opposite effect, pushing people away rather than inviting them in. Yeah, yeah, I see that. Let me think about it. Sure, and when this trap occurs, it can be useful to ask, for example, why do I need to teach or convince or inspire others about my learning experience? Where is this perceived need stemming from? And if you really feel you need to bring something to the attention of others, maybe you can ask yourself, what is the most pedagogically responsible and effective way to do so so that your message can land. But this is different.
It feels good to accept reality. Not good, good, because it's actually awful, very painful. As we feel the disappearance of life unfold around us. But for me, it's better to accept reality than to live in denial. Better to undergo a lens shift and therefore see and feel things as they really are. It's better to be ready to die at any moment, knowing that the truth of that moment was our final breath. Now, none of this is new, of course. Buddhism and similar spiritual practices have been teaching us this for forever. So what's next? I try to keep this excerpt from Robert Jaynes's Museums and Social Collapse, the Museum as Lifeboat, in mind. Hopeless need not mean helpless. On the contrary, hopelessness is the springboard to helpfulness, supportive, effective, and useful. In other words, how to be supportive, effective, and useful while living on a plane that is gliding towards a crash. So my energy is not focused on fixing that gliding plane in mid-flight, tempting as that might be, but rather to focus on those who survive the crash so that they might have a fresh start. And for those that follow the Conscient Podcast, Season 6 will begin sometime in 2025 on the theme of Art and Culture in Times of Crisis and Collapse. Welcome to the Conscient Podcast, Bob. Well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, this is the beginning of Season 6, so I'm quite excited, and it's also um, early days. Today is Monday... September 16th, 2024, and we're at your farm, and we've just been walking around with your son, not your farm, but your son's farm, or both of you. It's a partnership. (laughs) Good. Um, So I'm not absolutely clear what um, season six is going to be in the end, so it's early days, but I do know that I want to talk about art and culture in times of crisis and collapse, and I see your book in front of me here called Museum and Social Collapse, Societal Collapse, pardon me, the Museum as Lifeboat, and I just read it in the last few days. I'm also working I, on a artist's survival kit. I sometimes think it should be called Artist's Thriving Kit. But I'm not there yet. Thanks for listening.